I wanted to see what the lowest level we could beat Horizon Zero Dawn was, which meant finding every single way to avoid gaining experience, with more than one even managing to break the game entirely. We start out as young Aloy, getting a stone chucked at us for not having a mother. Yep, honestly what happens. Quite the gatherer, aren't you, little bast? Yeah, I think we all know what little bast is short for. Whilst avoiding them, we fall down a hole, finding the latest Google Wear, and after a training montage from Papa Rost, we start on our journey. First things first, what gives us experience? The big one is killing machines, so we want to avoid that as much as possible. Which does lead to an issue with our first quest. For the blaze, we can detach it by shooting the part on the machine. We do gain a tiny bit detaching it, so we will have to avoid doing this after this quest is done. Also, wildlife is off limits as well, so that means no animal materials to increase our ammo sizes. We're stuck with base level. After grabbing the last blaze needed, it was time for the metal shards. Handily through a bit of searching, found a supply chest with shards up for grabs. So killing machines, avoided for now. Grabbed a new weapon from the shop, and headed to Rost, who's prepping us for the proving trial in order to enter the Nora tribe. The same tribe who has shunned us for 20 years. And she is motherless. Right. This does lead to a big learning experience coming in the shape of an unavoidable sawtooth, who we take down with a combination of a silent strike, shocking with a tripcaster, and blowing up its canister and only receive experience for the machine kill, which means we can use silent strikes for reducing health of larger machines, and blowing up canisters doesn't give experience like detaching them does. Good to know. With that test passed, it's time for the proving. Well first we do get experience for beating the main quest, but can't do much about that, and we will be avoiding all side quests for this reason as well. With a good look from Rost, we head on into the Nora camp, where with a bit of looting, which is probably not a good first impression, we had enough for a couple more weapons. We also met a guy named Olin, who has the same hardware we have, although his seems more in the blink. Had a NASA with a visitor from Radiant City, Erend, who seems alright, and even invited to show us around if we visit. Now though, it was time to get things started. Right after a guy gets poofed out of existence, I meet an old friend, the little bastard. Now the proving. First test is grabbing a trophy from killing one of these deer machines. Now grazers have a lot of things to shoot off on them, so to avoid accidentally doing that and gaining experience, decided to go with a spear to take it down, grabbing our trophy. You just wait. Quickly grabbed another and chased after, going through the parkour section of the proving and beating a certain someone to the end. The outcast cheated. Unfortunately, we don't get time to rub it in. Now, during this ambush, we'll learn some big stuff for this challenge. First, headshots give extra experience and so are off limits, which is really inconvenient. The spear's our best friend at the minute. Second, I noticed that an enemy has lost health. Bast has put some work in, except for some reason he won't do the important thing and finish him off. No matter how long I waited, I had to end it myself. Good to know helpers actually do damage though. That'll be helpful for later. Wow, Bast actually saves us. No, I don't know how to feel now. He was a prick, but he also saved us. I got revenge spearing every last one of them down. Then let our guard down for just a second and got caught by Helis. But Rost comes in with a save. A good battle, but then... Turn the clock back 20 years and Rost would have wrecked you. With his last moments, Rost manages to push us out of harm's way and save us. Leading to us waking up in Mother's Heart, the mountain, for the next step of our journey. After scanning one of the enemy's devices, we discovered it was Olin who led them here. So now the hunt for Olin is on. But first we got cold shouldered by a door and then needed to get our Quidditch position so we could set off. Straight into another battle, this time with a lot more helpers, and this time they actually kill the machines. So hung back, let them deal with the smaller machines, and zero experience for us. The Crooks are on the other hand, we were forced to deal the final blow, so it did gain a bit there. But did give us the ability to override machines, and so we acquired Terry, which definitely beats walking. We meet up with the Warchief Son Val, and god I forgot how he looked in the first game. Beard definitely suits you better Val. He asks us to track down the chief, but we're going to leave that until it forces us back. For now we have to... Okay, that's not fair. For now we have to clear some corrupted zones, so Border Patrol will let us through to Meridian. Did forget the challenge for set there. Stealth kill's still a no-go. Reset, and with a few spear hits, we clear our first one. Plus, do get a chunky bit of experience for clearing the zone, but nothing can do about that. Oh, and due to the reset, we lost Terry, so I had to grab another one, and whilst doing so, had an idea. At the next corruption zone, I let him loose, and he absolutely demolished corrupted machines. Got the whistle skill to draw them closer, and Terry would do the rest, all whilst giving us zero experience. Solid teamwork. With that done, headed to the border, which was having its own issues, and we're back to doing things ourselves. The archers would lower the enemy's health, but don't finish them. They'd try using our newly learned trick with Terry, but this time he wasn't having it. Would do damage to them, but like the archers, wouldn't finish the job. So, to the trusty spear we go. Clear through them with a bit of difficulty. Without leveling up, our health is quite a bit lower than it should be. 
received another chunk of experience for finishing the quest, and now the way is clear from Meridian, and did take a pretty direct route to get there. We met up with Erend and went straight to business. Now. Erend also showed enthusiasm in his own way. Found out about Olin's situation, which complicates this revenge crusade I was on. For now, I needed to find him. Before we left, Erend asked us to help with the matter with his sister. Another main quest, but again, we'll leave until we're forced back. A bit surprised it hasn't already sent us back for the Nora stuff. Somehow lost Terry during the Meridian visit, so grabbed a new one and headed for Olin's location. We find him, but also two corruptors rising up and several cultists in our way. We get help from a stranger disabling their focuses, but the rest is down to me. Or is it? We do in fact get support in this fight from Olin, and this time the man himself can finish the machines and hunters off. Yeah, he does get knocked down quite easily, but solved that by lowering the enemy's health so Olin can take them down in one or two hits. We did have to clear the ones up top as they were a bit out of reach for him, but then found a hiding spot and spent the rest of the time lowering the two corruptors' health and letting Olin finish them off. Two corruptors down, zero experience gained, and it seemed we had a new target to focus on. The cultists, the known as the Eclipse, who want to kill us because we look like another woman, and we need to find out why. We got a location from Olin and headed north. Did have one death back there in the clearing, which did mean... Although his friend wasn't a fan of us taking his mate. Family. When we arrived, we met with a couple of Eclipse camps in the way. The first, we subtly sneak around, avoiding detection. The second, I got caught and yoloed it, which also worked. Then was met with our first Deathbringer machine. For this one, it wasn't too bad as it's stuck in that one spot. So found a hiding spot from its bullets, drew the smaller machines and Eclipse to us, and finished with the spear. The ones who wouldn't approach, we took down with shots to the stomach and legs to avoid headshots. Now for the Deathbringer itself, rapid shots of fire arrows to set it alight for some passive damage, then took a couple of shots at its detachables for bigger damage, only a couple though as didn't want to risk actually breaking them off, finishing it with only the machine kill. We then meet the big bad, but he'll have to wait until we learn a bit more about what's going on. Now to enter the ruins, with this door actually letting us through this time. Okay, can't say I've overslept that badly before. No enemies here, so sped through climbing up the place, and then sat in on a thousand year old meeting, finding out we look similar to a woman named Elizabeth, who was trying to save the world from killer machines. Sounds familiar but doesn't explain why we're being targeted now. We meet Silence, the voice who helped us in the clearing, who directs us to the next part for information. Quest done and we reach level 11, and we should be at level 18, so solid work. But things are gonna start getting tricky real fast. Terry hadn't hung around during our exploring, so I had to grab a new one, but I think the game wised to me now, as I got wrecked for the second time. Was worth the effort as he cleared the enemy's guard in the entrance for us. We then entered a room with a boatload of enemies and an objective to clear them. Instead though, ran through and turns out we could just totally ignore them. Take that quest objective. This... this might be more of a problem. Standard pattern with the guards clearing with our spear, but the Deathbringer just melted through our low health. So it was a lot of running, setting it on fire and trying to damage it however we could in the meantime. Got it quite low on our first attempt, but ran out of healing. Second go, using a combination of more explosive trip wires and continuing with the fire arrows, managed to wear it down without even knocking any components off. A small mistake though, didn't time it quite right and got some extra burning experience. We're gonna take that after how long that fight took. Sat in on another meeting, by now Elizabeth managed to stop the machines with something called Zero Dawn. What's that? Well we need to go right into the Eclipse capital city to find out, which Silence needs time to do some work to get us in. So after quite a bit of time away, we are now being forced back to search for a certain Nora Warchief. To start though, new Terry. Oh come on. I need whatever bow she's using. We then get drawn into a series of quests to take revenge for the attack on the Nora, which were interesting and pretty funny in certain cases with this challenge. The first one is a camp ambush with the Chief, where it hopes they could take down the Eclipse and the machines if I lowered their health, but not only did that not work, I waited so long for them to do it that they instead bunched together and became a glitchy Nora Cerberus, refusing to even move. <sighs> so back to the trusty spear. The second one is clearing some smaller camps before the big one, where all our job was, was taking out an alarm in each of them. Then Nora troops came in to finish the guards. I'm happy with that. And the final part being the big camp, where we had three objectives. Sneak in, pretty simple. Number two, set alight the store of blaze in the camp, which by running through was easily done. And finally to finish off the camp. Now here, I took the more spectator role. I'm rooting for your chief. Go get him Val, you can do it. Good work everyone, nice teamwork there. With that done, as if by magic, Silence is all ready to lead us to the next part. We reach the meeting spot with the plan of sneaking into the Eclipse's main base, crashing their Wi-Fi connection so we can't get reported when we reach the city. Okay, the first part of infiltration wasn't exactly stealthy, but nothing stopped us. 
Low and quiet does it. Yep, low and quiet Aloy. That's us. Now, the base itself. First try the classic YOLO run through, but when enemies are alert, we don't get the prompt to push this tree, which we need to get across. So we needed either all enemies diagroed or to get rid of them. I tried several hiding spots throughout the base, but someone always seemed to spot us. That is, until I found this little ledge past the tree. Hid there for a few moments, headed back, and now we could get across. We then met our nemesis. Wait, no, that's the third game. Destroyed the Wi-Fi box, which Hades didn't take very well. Then had to speed out with Silence offering helpful advice. Yeah, you think? Getting back to the entrance, rappelling down. Did survive the drop, and with that, it was time for the capital, some answers, and a game-breaking glitch. Yo, Terry. We entered the city with no one immediately attacking us, so the plan must have worked. Headed through and down into the Zero Dawn bunker, where door trouble was back. Managed to get through, but did alert some enemies. And then we finally find out the truth about Zero Dawn. Not being a super weapon, but the building of an AI system to repopulate the world after it ended a thousand years ago. With one AI system part of Zero Dawn, Hades, now the one trying to kill us. That being said, we still don't know why Hades is after us. For that, we need to enter the door from the start, requiring a bit of tech further in the bunker. And here is where things go wrong. We come across three seemingly normal enemies. Now to get past the door they're guarding, we have to solve a small puzzle, which was fine. Managed to solve it while they watched for some reason instead of attacking. I think it's something to do with the key turning animation. Ran past, leaving them alive, and entered the next room. And by doing that, the game, not exaggerating, is now broken and softlocked. The broken part we find out immediately, as enemies shown in the cutscene just do not appear when we enter gameplay. The softlock we won't find out for a little bit. At the time I thought it was immediate as well, as the door we need is locked. But after jumping up pretty much everything in the room, managed to find a way to get to the balcony above which gave us a clear path through to Elizabeth's office and the key to the Nora door we needed. Before we could head on to find out though, Helis manages to get the drop on us. We end up back in Sunfall, where we have to go through Helis's villain monologue. Destiny, purpose, light, dark, same old spiel. Actually reminds me of another role the voice actor played once. Had a quick fight with the behemoth machine, and although we were at quite a low level, the freeze canisters on its back led to a pretty easy fight before getting the save from Silence. After catching up, we had our next set of events ready. Go save the Nora from the band Helis had sent, find the secret behind the door, and end Hades. All good? Well, apparently not, and a big signal of that is showing on the screen right now. Now I didn't notice it at first, so I carried on like normal and went straight for the Nora. And we came across a very strange sight. The place has been wrecked with definite signs of battle, but not a machine in sight. We even couldn't enter the mountain and visit the door we need, although we can't get into it. Even a quit out didn't solve this. So what's the problem? Well as you might have noticed, our quest hasn't changed. For some reason, although we got the required item in the Zero Dawn bunker and gone through the following arena section, the game hasn't recognised us completing that quest because we never beat those three enemies we avoided whilst completing the puzzle. Because we avoided three enemies, we are now unable to progress. So I need to go back to the bunker. And a couple of very weird things happen when we re-enter this place. Dialogue starts repeating, enemies are missing, and the alpha key is still there. Actually no, it's not. When we go through the door, it disappears. So now what? Is that it? The end? Well, no. Even though we had done a quit out near the mountain, doing another one in the facility randomly brought back all the enemies. So, round two. Well, it was actually round three I beat them, but let's ignore that death there. And after the third one, like magic, our task has changed. And enemies have now magically appeared in the next room. Now I did check and we still could reach the final room, but we are forced in this case to follow the objectives and kill the enemies. Until finally our objective was the office. Got there, broke the door open for the fourth time, entered and immediately, Getting spawned outside the city. Only now receiving the experience for that quest and the arena fight. Whew, that was a lot. With that mess out of the way, time to go save the Nora. But thankfully everything's as it should be, with the machines and the Eclipse roaming everywhere. Met up with Chief and Val at the top, where I did my part, lowering the health of the big Thunderjaw, but let them finish it off. And then I went around scavenging and hiding behind a rock whilst I waited for them to finish the Eclipse. We did it! Aloy did it! We only helped. Um, give yourself more credit, Val. We then finally entered the mountain, learning of the sabotage caused by Hades and the fact with the new device, the Master Override, we as a clone of Elizabeth are the only one who can purge Hades, hence his hunt for us. We head over to the facility holding it, having one last bit of Terry trouble. Sorry Terry. Grabbed the Master Override, attached it to our spear and was all set for the final battle. 
is what I'd like to say, but there's a certain plot line we've not touched on since all the way back in Meridian, which now rears up to take us off course, Eren's quest. Thankfully nothing too big that got in our way, but did include probably the most infuriating moment in the run. At the search site we meet him, there are several enemies attacking and firing at us. The good news is Eren can finish them off. The bad news is that he can choose not to. The first time, he stayed by the wall and refused to back up to take out the final enemy, so eventually had to reset. The second time, we again get to the last enemy and he wanders off. Like, where are you going? <sighs> reset. Finally, the third time, he decided to end things. Thank God. We got the location of his sister, so headed there to meet with Eren's group. At the site there are machines tied up which we can release to take out some of the enemies. After that, left it to them and Eren's group to take out the rest. Nice shot Eren. Then a bit of a 2v1 with Eren to take out the leader. It wasn't over though as we still had to stop an attack happen at Meridian by the true leader. Back in the city with Eren showing more door skills, we proceeded to set off an explosion early to avoid it taking down buildings, stop an assassination against the king, and finish taking down the group, the leader, and even his summoned machines single handedly. What a ride. Finishing this quest, gaining another level to start the last battle at level 20. And I still had one last trick up my sleeve for this mission. We start with a bang. Now the final mission takes place in three parts. First, we've got some unfinished business to take care of, Helis. Using the exploding barrels around, we managed to take him down pretty swiftly and finally ended this. That was for Rost. The next part is several waves of machines, all coming to take us down and increase our level. Except, this is where I pull my ace out. Now big shout out to Elkier Speedruns, and apologies if that pronunciation is wrong if you're watching this, who beat this game on ultra hard without taking any damage, and using his method of dealing with this part, pretty much avoided all leveling. Instead of staying with our two companions here, we cross the river, climb the cliff opposite, and now this is our new home, leaving the killing of machines to our companions down there. We couldn't just watch though, as they kept getting knocked over, so had to attract the machine's attention, and then they could finish them off. So that's what I did, and it only took 30 minutes. Yeah. Did have one accident, killing one machine as their health bars don't appear at this range, but in that whole section of Deathbringers, Corruptors, Stormbirds, that was it for experience gained. Meaning we faced the final part, one last Deathbringer guarding Hades to take down and end this. So with this being the final fight, I would say we do finish off this challenge, beating the Deathbringer and this challenge at level 20. Going to level 21 after ridding ourselves of Hades. Hope you enjoyed the challenge and we'll see you for the next one.